Hello everyone, how do I learn mathematics? This is the topic of today's video. Welcome to Math Topics. How do you best way to learn mathematics? I'm going to answer the question from my perspective. Don't believe that I learned mathematics effectively since the beginning of my education. No. Don't believe that I understood the uh, abstraction of the concept since I was in elementary school. No. I struggled with mathematics at some point in high school. I didn't have a strong foundation in mathematics. And when I reached the University of Havana, because I'm from Cuba, I started struggling understanding analysis, mathematics analysis. And those abstractions, uh, those conceptual mathematics uh, ideas that I didn't know how to manage, and the most important, how to understand it. Throughout the years, of self-learning self and sometimes learning from masters, uh, I start uh, increasing my level of understanding. I have been teaching for probably 23, 24 years, including my experience in Cuba. It's about that. It's about 23, 24 years. Um, and I learn mathematics every day. And the perspective uh, in which I believe is the effectiveness of the learning of this subject is every day. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you uh, from my perspective in a brief way uh, my recommendation, my personal experience recommendation on how do we learn mathematics effectively. This is the topic of the video and I would like that you participate and, and write your comments below and Tell us, from your perspective, that people need to know how to learn mathematics. Students need to know how the people that know mathematics, they learn mathematics. We owe that to the society because that will make the life of many, many thousands and millions of people better and the experience with mathematics will be different. Welcome to Math Topics. This is the way I think I learn mathematics effectively. If you like this uh, type of videos about math um, pedagogy, uh, we can create a series of videos. Uh, so leave your comments, tell, tell us if um, we can create in math topics a community of uh, math pedagogy, math uh, teachers, uh, math lovers, uh, people that they want to um, create uh, something for the others, um, especially um, how to impact the rest of the life of students that wants to be successful in mathematics. Just leave your comments below and, and, and let us know. Math topics can be a community of learning and we can have a podcast live and everyone can participate in this idea. <clears throat> how do I learn mathematics effectively? Or how I think is the way to learn it? Or one of them, my personal view. I discovered many years ago, the mathematics is a building that has a foundation, have the walls, 
have all the structures of a building, a very powerful building, but all of them are connected. You can see Euclid's uh, geometry that starts from the definition of a point and move to a line and move to a plane and move to polygons and move to properties of angles. In the same way that Euclid approaches geometry, the plane geometry, this is what is mathematics. Mathematics is no more than a powerful building constructed with many, many pieces and all of them are connected. And that's the word of the video. Connections. When you learn mathematics, you need to establish all the possible connections around that particular topic. And this is, this is key to start understanding. And this is key to start understanding your weaknesses. Because when you understand that you need to know, you need to master this topic, but this topic depends on another topic and another topic and another topic. And you notice that in some of those topics, you are not a master yet. Before you learn this topic, you need to understand and master the topics that are connected, that makes possible your understanding of the big topic. The mathematical big ideas. That connection, that connectivity is critical for learners and is critical for teachers. So, because this video is about me, I need to explain mathematics connections in order to make possible the understanding of a particular topic. And I always say, I, I always put this example. What is for you a fraction, for example? So I'm going to use my marker and I'm going to talk and we can have this conversation for three hours or more. What is a fraction? Oh, a fraction, yeah, it's an arithmetical structure, numerator, denominator. No, yes, but it's also what else? What else is a fraction? Oh, fraction is a decimal number. We are talking in terms of arithmetic okay 0 0.5 is a percent yeah but it's a probability too it's the probability that you get a I don't know you toss a coin and what is the probability to get head or tail so this is the connection and you can say those connections in any great level because they are ideas. They are ideas from, from reality. The one half can be a pizza divided in two. The different representations will help the students understand that we can see things in different ways, in different displays. Like, for example, exponents, when I teach 3 to the power of 2, I'm saying this is another way to display number 9. So this is equal number 9. And whatever I see number 9, I can, I can put 3 to the power of 2. And then we talk about displays. We talk about different ways to say the same. And then... It's when you start constructing in your learner the ability to establish connections between the different elements or pieces of the mathematics. For example, if I said, what is this? X to the power of 2. Depending on the grade level, they can say, it's a, it's a high school students can say, oh, this is, uh, I don't know. A monomial. Oh, yes, it's a monomial. Are you right? Yeah, it's a monomial. And you said, uh, what else? 
uh, another student can say, oh, this is a quadratic expression. Oh, yeah. It's a quadratic monomial. One terms, power two. Yeah. But what else? And you start asking the same question. But what else is x to the power of two? And and, and, and somebody can come and said, oh, this is uh, uh, the square, I don't know, with sides equal x. And the area is x to the power of two. So x to the second power is area. And what else? What else? No, this is a function in mathematics. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's a function in mathematics. It's the function that generates all the squares of the numbers. So you pick one number and you square the number. You pick one number and the function is square the number. Oh, so it's y equal x to the second power. It's a function depending on the grade level. And the students can see the connectivity between different fields of the mathematics. And then you do the same with, with I don't know, x to the power of 3. They can say it's cubic. Oh, yeah, it's cubic. What else? It's a function that generates the, the cube of any number. Oh, yeah, wonderful. But also, it's the volume. Yeah, it's a volume of a cube. Length times width times height. And all the sides are the same, so it's x times x times x is x to the power of 3. And this is, in my opinion, the effectiveness of teaching and the effectiveness of learning. That you cannot see this separated. And you can play. The students need to know that they can play with numbers, that they can play with expressions, that they can play with algebra, and they can play it at the same time with millions of different pieces of a big puzzle that is mathematics. This is the way I think I learn math. And that's the way I try to teach my students mathematics. Because if you separate topics and you do not mention the past experience in mathematics, the previous topics, you're not contributing to the student's development of the mathematics skills needed. And that's why, or one other why, that students continue, many students continue struggling with mathematics because they see everything separated. And if I'm struggling right here, I, I do not solve this and I move to the next level and that ne level depends on the previous level so I continue struggling. This is one of the main reasons of students continuously struggling in mathematics. Of course, we are not talking about the different areas of teaching and pedag pedagogy. We are not talking about um, structure, procedural, uh, fluency, no. You can reach fluency, you can reach uh, mastering procedural mathematics when you know the connectivity between the mathematics. And, and later on, you will see the results. All those students will be, will be seeing the results an increasing understanding, an increasing mastery, and an increasing uh, level of perfection. And, and talk freely every time that you have a chance as a teacher 
to talk about those connections. For example, inverse operations. Something that do and something that undo. You don't have to mention mathematics language. Something that do and something that undo. This is super critical in mathematics. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, power of two, square root of two, power of three, square root of three. Derivative, integral. This is a powerful idea. How can I do and undo? And you can talk, you can have that conversation in every, every class, in every uh, level. So I don't want to extend the video. I want to, to uh, stop right here. Uh, I'm going to wait for you to write your ideas, to share the ideas. What do you think if we can start a podcast? I don't know, every week, every month, every two weeks, live in which you can participate here. You, the viewer, my subscriber, and, and have that, this conversation and, and you too allow us to share uh, and the people can learn from experts like you. So if you like the video, please subscribe. Uh, help math topics uh, disseminate math, math education. Thank you for watching. See you in the next uh, pedagogy video about the, effect the effectiveness of teaching and learning math. Thank you.